So what do you do when you have a patient who's complaining of this headache? You get their history. If you're absolutely convinced, then you proceed with treatment. If you're not convinced because the headache's not quite right, they have some history of headache, they didn't really have a documented wet tap, then you're in a little bit of a bind and you have to think through the possibilities, review your differential diagnosis, um, and consider sticking to uh, non-invasive therapies until the sort of patient declares themselves a little better. So what are the treatment options? And there are many. Um, but only a couple that really seem to work very well. So treatment. First, conservative, obviously bed rest, um, NSAIDs, analgesics. The bed rest part is not terribly practical when a lady has a brand new baby to take care of and can't even sit up to nurse. Um, there are some uh, other new things that may be working, steroids, gabapentin, uh, triptans work in about a third of the patients, so those are things to consider. They're, they're certainly not a standard of care at this point. Um, caffeine can work, and you can give that IV, although be careful about the cost. In our hospital, it turned out they were using neonatal caffeine, which was extraordinarily expensive. Um, PO caffeine works, but this is not uh, go drink a cup of coffee. This is go to the store and buy Nodos or Viverin and take a couple of them every eight hours. Um, of course, it gives some GI distress, makes the lady not get any sleep, which worsens things. Uh, doesn't actually solve the problem, but can alleviate the symptoms enough until by natural improvement she ends up better. And, and you can occasionally have some success, especially with the smaller holes um, with PO caffeine. And, and it's worth trying for a patient who maybe goes home, finds out she has a headache, and lives two hours away and doesn't really want to consider a blood patch anyway, she could certainly try caffeine at home. The definitive treatment is the epidural blood patch. That involves drawing blood sterilely from the patient and placing it into the epidural space. So it's another two-e needle into the back. Um, obviously this time it needs to be done by the most skilled person because a wet tap to treat a Posterior puncture headache from a wet tap is sort of the worst possible scenario. Um, there are risks to the epidural blood patch. You certainly can't do it in someone who could be bacteremic, so you want to make sure they're afebrile. Um, if they are febrile, then they probably need to be treated first. Um, you can, by placing this blood back there, you are um, taking sort of an empty spine and, and uh, putting this big compression here. So what CSF is there is going to be pushed upwards and the idea is that the brain then gets refloated. So it works immediately. Meanwhile, the clot sits over, over the hole that was leaking and prevents further leakage. So it not only treats the immediate problem, but it also prevents future problem. Um, you need to give 12 cc's to 20 cc's um, so as you're injecting the blood, the patient will start to complain of pressure in their back. If they have pressure before 12 cc's, I just slow down the injection until I get to 12. If they do fine, I go up to 20. And occasionally, if they've had no symptoms, I, I may even add another 10 cc's. Um, in my experience, if they get no back pressure, it seems like there's a higher failure rate. Um, after the placement of it, they need to lay flat for two hours uh, so that the blood can clot well over the hole. And then you raise the head of the bed slowly and typically they are amazed at how much better they feel. Um, put them on stool softeners and advise them not to lift anything heavy because that patch can actually get dislodged if you have an, a significant increase in your intracranial pressure. The risks of an epidural blood patch are the same as for the initial placement of the epidural, um, but because of the pressure you generate, it's, it's theoretically more common to get uh, cranial nerve findings and those sorts of things. I, I've never witnessed that. Um, the other thing is back pain is a big deal, and that can last 24 to 48 hours. Um, it does go away. I tell them to just take analgesics, but even lower extremity pain from just the pressure. And when you think about it, this is basically causing an epidural hematoma. It's an intentional one, and they don't get um, as much problems from it 
as obviously they would from an epidural hematoma. If the epidural blood patch is unsuccessful, then you need to really rethink your diagnosis. Um, repeat blood patches can be successful. The success rate is somewhere between 70 and 90% for the first one and goes up from there. But if you have the wrong diagnosis, for instance, if they have an intracranial hemorrhage and you do an epidural blood patch, you can significantly raise their ICP and actually cause herniation and, and disastrous consequences. So uh, making a clear diagnosis, considering the treatment options, obtaining consent, because this is a, a, a headache that will go away on its own if, if, that's pos if it's possible to wait um, prior to instituting an epidural blood patch is, is very reasonable.